Hey guys, my name's Kadroth, and today we're going to be going over with you guys Mr. James Moriarty. That is to say, his ruler version. So Young Mori, as a lot of people like to call him, is going to be a limited unit. He's going to be coming out with the second banner for LB 6.5, Trom. And he's going to be a unit that has been talked about at least quite a bit over the years. When he first came out, a lot of people really gave him uh, a tough time. And honestly, I think a lot of it boils down to people just either didn't care for his design, they didn't care for his character, or they just maybe felt in a weird way threatened by him. And I'm going to explain that in a minute, but to give a TLDR of it, basically, I think a lot of it boiled down to people just really you know, were set in their ways, they had their space Ishtars, their summer commas, and they didn't want to touch another, like, arts looper that could have been potentially an omni looper. So a lot of people gave him uh, a ton of uh, hell, basically, over this, but the reality is Moriarty is actually a very good unit. The problem I think that we have is that was the initial perception of him at launch, and then down the line, Basically, with JP now having ruler Mellison, he definitely has stiff competition. So we're going to talk about all of that as we kind of go through his kit. Keep all of that in mind, and we'll try to give you guys the best understanding that we possibly can of how to use him. So, let's go ahead and start out with Mr. Moriarty's kit here. So, again, he is a arts AoE looping ruler. And that can be very interesting to you for a couple of reasons. One, you may just want somebody that's a little bit on the tankier side. Rulers naturally having that sort of 50% resistance against all of the night, sorry, all of the original seven classes other than Berserker. So definitely a nice thing for Moriarty to have in his arsenal as he's just going to be able to take quite a bit of punishment. But on the flip side, maybe you just are looking for that high damage dealing uh, AoE, and Moriarty might not be the best option for that, though he can be somebody, especially in challenge content, that can definitely deal quite a bit of damage. So taking a look already at his raw stats here, you guys can see he has about 10k, 10.5k attack. This is not a stellar number, but honestly, for five-star rulers, it's also not that crazy of a number. Uh, basically, it is certainly on the lower end of five stars. Uh, he's not alone in this, uh, and it just kind of is the case for a lot of rulers, because the trade-off usually is that they are a more defensive unit, so they end up getting a lot more HP to kind of help them out. They just have naturally high mitigation, so giving them a high health pool makes them very difficult for a lot of enemies to kill. So again, at knocking on the door to about 15k HP there, that is nothing to sneeze at. It is actually a pretty good health value. As again, there's not too many units that are going to have too much more than this. He is man attributed uh, as, as Moriarty is. He does have a little bit higher than average star absorption for the ruler class here, and then pretty much right on average star generation. He ends up having 0.37 NP charge attack. This is one of the big things that I saw people really harping on, saying like, oh, he's just not a good looper. And I saw some really honestly stupid statements made about him. A lot of people have a tendency to look at this stat and assume that it is everything about a servant's looping capability. But I've often told you guys, remember that it is the entire summation of a unit's stats kit and noble phantasm that actually make them who they are so it's not just again going to be one stat that's going to determine his looping capability so he's actually still a fairly good looper and we'll talk about that more but uh again this is something that a lot of people pointed to as a reason for why he probably was not a good unit and they were frankly just wrong so taking his NP charge defense here, it's only 3%, but still, if he's getting hit at that point, you might be doing things right because it means that it's not hitting the rest of the party where maybe full damage would be getting applied. He has basically right on average 24 and a half death rate here, so you probably could take him into some death fights uh, and he should do okay, but again, just be careful about uh, death because it always works kind of better against you and your units than it ever does for you against the enemy. His alignment is chaotic evil, which is kind of to be expected at this point with Moriarty. He is a male gendered unit. He has hominid a servant, humanoid, uh, 
just normal servant and then weak to anima ellis so definitely an interesting lineup of traits but nothing too exploitable really he doesn't have a ton of these extra traits that a lot of these other units have kind of in the same way that uh you know sherlock holmes does they're both very difficult to deal with types of units now, looking at his actual deck here, he does end up with the Triple Arts deck. I've talked about this numerous times over the years, but Triple Arts is probably just one of the best decks you can have for overall card performance if you're trying to just focus on a Servant's Noble Phantasm. Why? Because it's going to get you back to it fast. It's going to allow you to form Triple Arts chains, either with the unit's own cards, their own NP, or even with other units' arts cards that's going to get them that free 20% extra charge whenever they utilize it. So it's really a nice thing. It's just going to help him kind of in his looping capability should you have to card. But honestly, that shouldn't be too required as long as you stay within the confines of a three turn. If you get outside of a three turn, then certainly card performance is going to be a little bit more of an issue. But you can already kind of see at this point why they maybe capped him at the 0.37 NP gain rate. Because he does end up having these three arts cards and they are four hit, which is above average. The average hit count for a card in the game at this point is basically three so having him at four hits is certainly very good and i think that's one of the reasons why they kind of factored that in certainly you can see all of his hit counts are at four which is definitely a stellar thing to have and his extra attack is the only normal one at five which is kind of standard for an extra attack but still, it is a very good deck. It's very robust in terms of what you're going to be trying to do with them. So it's exactly what you want. It is essentially the perfect deck for Moriarty. Now, as we take a look at his skills, you can see his first skill here grants himself evasion for two attacks, three turns. So it's not going to be a perfect hard defense here, but it is a hard defense to the extent that he will be able to ignore noble phantasms and such unless it has some sort of buff removal or piercing capability. Either way, this is still going to be a decent survival skill on a ruler that already was tanky to begin with. This is why I say he is going to have some staying power down the stretch in terms of challenge content. It's actually something that I've talked about with one of my favorite units, uh, Bunny Artoria, quite a bit of times uh, as a lot of people have a tendency to also look at her relative lack of overall damage. But she also ends up being a very, very tanky ruler that actually has a hard survival aspect to her kit, and that just makes her very hard to kill. It's going to be the same thing here with Moriarty, as he will be able to at least invalidate a lot of those noble phantasms coming his way, which pretty much are going to be the only things that should be capable of killing him. He does have Ignore Invasion here for three turns as well. So again, sure hit, as we like to call it. It is not Invuln Pierce, but it is better than nothing. And so at that point, uh, this will determine a lot of his capability of what he can be used against. Certainly, this means that you can use him in just normal capacity, but you can also use him against dodge prone uh, enemies, and he should be able to do quite a bit of work. The only thing, like I said, is just be careful against solemn defense or invuln foes, as he won't have anything in his kit naturally to deal with that. So you may have to adjust craft essences accordingly. You can also see he will reduce uh, all enemies' arts resistance for three turns by 20%. I always do like having a multi-turn buff, but this is a multi-turn debuff. So this does mean you're going to have to pick and choose when you use this skill, especially because of the aspect of the second part of it here. But essentially, the thing you need to understand is that when you're dealing with a debuff, it will not be carried with you into a new wave. So that means if you press this skill, it's only going to apply to the units that are in front of you right at that moment which could be useful again in an early wave, maybe to get you some extra NP gain, but I am going to say in most cases, you probably won't want to do that with Moriarty. And the reason why is going to be because his NP gain is very sort of static, it does not scale too well because of its low NP gain number. And that's actually something that kind of helps because it takes a lot of the pressure off to just go ahead and pop this skill right away. Certainly, if you just want a brainless three-turn loop, you can go ahead and do that, especially if you know that you have the damage to kill on the final wave. 
But at the end of the day, this may be something that you maybe want to hold in your back pocket until the later wave, with the reason being that, again, it's also going to reduce the enemy's arts resistance even further if they are evil alignment for three turns. So as a result, you want to really pick and choose how you use this. The thing to understand about this is this will be a snapshot type of skill. So again, you're going to want to make sure that if you're going up against the same enemy over and over again, that maybe you've actually gotten Moriarty's Noble Phantasm off. That way you don't end up losing the second part of this effect. All of this is going to end up being on a six turn cooldown, which is rather good. And then we get to his second skill here. It is a tricolor buff, as we like to call them, a three turn all type steroid of 30%. Definitely really nice as it's going to impact not just his NP, but his carding capability as well. And then he's going to get an increase to his critical damage for 30% for three turns, all on a six turn cooldown. So really, it is a nice aspect to have all of this as just every single part of his kit here, of his deck, is going to get enhanced by this. His third skill gets a little bit more iffy. It is, ironically enough, his 50% charge skill. This is going to be how the devs help him deal basically with, you know, that lower NP gain number. He's basically an arts unit with 50% charge. You've actually kind of already seen this. A, a close analog that I can give you guys would be Sakamoto Ryoma Lancer. A lot of people kind of... Uh, you know, also thought that Sakamoto's NP gain was low, but the reality was he's still a very good looper. And it's going to be the same thing here with Moriarty, is you're going to have the capability of three turning with him from a zero standpoint. So again, 50% charge right there is definitely going to be nice. But then he gets a random buff, basically, where it is a 50% chance to get either one or the other of these two effects. So you cannot have both at the same time. It's going to increase his own critical star absorption of arts cards for one turn or buster cards for one turn, again by 500% each. Ideally, for most things with Moriarty, you're really going to want it on that arts card. But again, maybe if you landed on the buster card, you get at least some more damage out of that. It might not have been what you were hoping for, but it would at least get you that capability to produce more damage. Certainly, if you had the, the crit stars instead on the arts card, that could actually help with damage as well, but maybe not as much as Buster, but maybe more than Buster, depending on how many arts buffs you have flying around at that moment. And then certainly, it's also going to be something that would impact NP gain if you can manage to land an arts crit that will really help you out. He is also going to gain critical stars here up to 20, as you guys can see. So definitely not a small star bomb in the slightest, but it is an arts unit probably surrounded by arts supports. So unless you're rocking something like cast or guild, don't expect a ton of arts or sorry, don't expect a ton of uh, crit stars in there as that's just kind of something that arts is not really known for. You do have the capability always of manufacturing stars on your own, but Moriarty has it built into his kit, so it is definitely a feather in his cap. And again, all of that on a six turn cooldown. Talking about his passes now, you can see he has independent action A for some additional critical damage there to help out. A unique territory creation variant here called Conspiracy Creation EX that improves not only his arts performance, but also his noble phantasm damage just outright. And this, because it is NP damage, can be doubled up by someone like Oberon's third skill. So again, really, really nice there. He does have Panic Cut C as well here that grants himself Charm, Confusion, Terror, and Skill Seal debuff immunity. It is actually really strong. So again, this is why I say Moriarty has quite a bit of usefulness in terms of challenge content, even if we're not looking at him as somebody like, say, a just, you know, normal farming looper. So he does have other applications. He does not have to be used just to a farming capacity. Taking a look at his third append here, you can see he increases his own attack against ruler enemies. This might be useful depending on his NP, but I'm still going to say it's probably not worth the coins, especially since he is a limited five star. I would instead tell you to go with something like the mana loading first as any little bit of extra charge he can get is probably going to help him out since he's going to be an arts unit that's going to focus a little bit more on brute forcing it rather than necessarily just solidly refunding a lot of his Noble Phantasm. 
Certainly, then you also end up having the extra attack finesse improvement. And while he does only have an average hit count on the extra attack, you are probably going to be wanting to use his cards quite a bit to keep him looping in a uh, normal like challenge environment. So if you do see yourself using him in far more challenge opportunities, this is where I think this one would really come into play for him. Certainly, again, I'm going to tell you probably mana loading is still the best choice, but it's up to you to determine which one you wish to go with. You can see now as we get to his Noble Phantasm that he does only have a 4 hit NP. It is AoE, so it's actually going to end up being 12 hits if you're up against 3 enemies or even more. And then at that point, it's not going to be a super high hit count. So again, this is where I think a lot of people looking at the low hit count, looking at the low uh, NP gain stat, just assume that Moriarty would not be a good looper. But he is an arts unit, he's naturally going to get some refund, and he does end up having a 50% charge in his kit, so those people were wrong. <laughs> Basically, he does end up having the capability uh, with this Noble Phantasm to deal damage to all enemies, but then also super effective damage against enemies that are good alignment. So really, again, you can see he gets this extra damage niche that's just going to help him out quite a bit. He is going to then seal their skills for one turn, which can obviously be good or bad, depending on how you want to look at things. This is going to mean that enemies are not going to activate their skills and thus either just going to fire off a Noble Phantasm or start carding against him. So if you're a little bit worried about damage that might be incoming, maybe hold off on the Noble Phantasm or just try to kill outright with it so that you don't have to deal with that. But either way, it's always something to consider whenever you use skill seal. And then from there, you can see he will also inflict evil alignment on them for three turns. This is going to be quite interesting as it is an alignment buff. And as you guys saw, if you remember his first skill here, he basically can further reduce the arts resistance of evil alignment enemies for three turns. This is why I said it's probably a good idea to hold this skill until the third wave. Or again, if you're going up against the uh, the enemies like uh, for multiple turns, at least at that point, waiting until you get a Mori uh, Noble Phantasm off first before activating this skill. So it's totally up to you as to how to use it. You can use it right away if you want, or you can delay it until you get this impact from his NP, but it is a rather nice thing. And usually these sorts of things are actually not resistible. It just straight up changes the enemy as it confers to them an extra trait or an extra alignment in that regard. His overcharge effect here increases his own Noble Phantasm damage for one turn, activating first, and it is basically a base of 20%, so this can be boosted by somebody like Oberon. It is going to be very nice in that regard, as it will be able to be doubled up. Unfortunately, it is not something that is multi-turn duration, so it's not going to stack and keep getting stronger, but I suppose they probably wanted to rein Moriarty in to some degree. Now, that is Moriarty's kit overall. Let's go ahead and talk about those actual refund numbers, because that is going to dramatically sort of impact his performance. So with that in mind, I think it's actually best if we attack this from a standpoint of both with and without the effects of the first skill. So with two times Castoria against three neutral enemies which is pretty much just going to be par for the course for Moriarty, as that's probably what you'll encounter most of the time. You're going to be looking at, basically, without the first skill, Moriarty refunding pretty much on the dot 50% with no, no overkill hits. So this is, without even killing the enemy, Moriarty will refund back to 50. With the skill 1's first effect in play, you're going to be looking at that number instead being about 54%. This is why I said the pressure is really not there for you to necessarily have to pop this skill early. It can certainly attribute more damage, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a thing for refund purposes because that is not enough really to make a difference in his refund. And then with both effects in play, that is to say maybe the enemy is evil alignment already or maybe you have turned them evil, you are looking at at that point basically 59%, it's 58.61. So again, that right there might be enough to get you kind of that rounding error and help you out, but it is what it is. 
So it's why I said you really probably want to pay attention to how you use this first skill. But that's no overkill hits, and that's assuming you don't kill at that point. If you kill your enemies, that is to say if you even get three overkill hits, you're instead looking at 56% basically without the first skill, 61% with only the effect of the first one, and then essentially 66% there with both effects of both arts downs in play. So really it is an interesting thing to at least analyze. But let's try to tackle maybe that concept that Moriarty is not a good looper, that you can't manage to make Moriarty work very well because he requires a third support. He is a 50% charger, and he is an arts unit, and we know he refunds. So how is his refund going to be then against two enemies instead of three? So this would be a like two enemy node instead, or a two uh, enemy wave instead of a three enemy wave. This is two times Castori against two neutral enemies. Without his skill one, you're basically looking at 33% there at... Uh, with no overkill hits. You're looking at 36% basically with the first effect, and then you're ending up looking at 39% with both effects in play. So while this may not seem like these are good numbers, this is actually pretty standard to what a lot of quick units actually do against three enemies. So it's really not that bad in the grand scheme of things. And yes, we can actually operate under these conditions. So Moriarty can loop against two enemy waves, which is not that bad then at that point. Certainly the standard for what we consider to be a good looper needs to at least be examined overall. But I am going to say that Moriarty has that capability. So really no one should be trying to make this argument about him. A lot of it's going to probably instead come down to damage, and yes, certainly if you have a more robust waifu or husbando in your Chaldea already, Moriarty is not someone you necessarily need to consider. But he is there for you if you need that option, or you just really like his design, or again, you feel like he would be someone good to add to your roster for whatever reason. So, if we start talking about something like Berserkers instead, this is basically against three Berserkers, so not neutral damage. Remember, Berserkers means that he's going to be dealing actually effective damage for once, but it's going to be tempered by the fact that Berserkers are just a horrible class to actually MP gain against, as they have one of the worst modifiers. And so you can see, basically, with no skill one in play, uh, you're looking at basically 40% with no overkill hits, 43% with just the first effect, and then 40, eh, basically 47% there with uh, both effects in play. If you manage to even get three overkill hits, then pretty much with only the first effect in play, you would be uh, pretty much knocking on the door right there at 49%, which is probably going to be enough for you to round up. So certainly at that point, like I said, he's capable of doing it kind of regardless of the circumstances, and that shouldn't be too much to worry about. Now, let's go ahead and talk about, with that in mind, some CE options for Mori. Well, we just basically said that he's capable of starting from zero, so doing something like Black Grail means you're going to get a ton of extra damage added. This will scale and multiply with his super effective power mod, and again, it is going to actually help him out in terms of just raw power, which is probably something that he needs the most. So it is going to be, even though it's something that I recommend quite a bit nowadays, something that I really recommend on Moriarty. Certainly, maybe you're up against a scenario where, you know, maybe there's a single enemy wave, maybe you just don't have enough charge somehow, and either way, something like Ocean Flyer would be a good pairing with him. It does still give some arts up, it does still give NP damage up, but it gives that 50% charge. It's also a welfare CE, so a lot of you should have it. Maybe you still want that extra little edge of having started from zero. So something like Sign of a Smiling Face can be an option for you. It is a rather nice CE, but it is a gotcha CE from an old New Year's event. So you're not necessarily guaranteed to get another crack at it if you don't have it already. It is all attack scaling. It does give NP damage, NP gain, and arts up. So it can facilitate a little bit more looping capability. But if you're maybe never rolled on this, you might have one of the older welfare CEs from the Oniland event called Royal Icing. Maybe at some point JP brings this back for us. 
but certainly this one's also another nice one as it gives arts up and NP damage. It's actually more damage than Sign of a Smiling Face. It's just not going to be as much refund capability as that one would be. So it's kind of up to you to determine just how much refund you're going to need in that type of scenario. Also, just kind of keeping in mind the fact that he only has Sure Hit, there may be the occasional time that you actually need something like Invuln Pierce. Honey Lake is obviously my de facto go-to for this sort of thing. It is the best in class at what it does. It basically is all attack scaling, gives Invuln Pierce all the time, but then gives a power mod against enemies that have burn status of up to 40%, which is very, very good as this is not only going to impact the Noble Phantasm, but also carding capability. The issue at play is that you certainly would need the ability to inflict burn, which Moriarty does not have naturally in his kit. So you would have to equip him with something like burn command codes, or maybe take somebody in the party that can also inflict burn for him. Either way, if you don't have something like Honey Lake, there are numerous other options out there, things like Origin Bullet. And again, at that point, if you have it, you have it. Also, Sweet Crystal is something that you could maybe buy from the Rare Prism Shop. Just be careful as it's five rare prisms per copy. So it's going to be a ton if you actually want MLB. Again, though, these are kind of the obvious options for him. You don't necessarily have to have these specific ones. You could try to use lesser rarities. But these are kind of the things that I'm going to recommend that would work the best with Moriarty. So now, with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about Moriarty's damage numbers. As you guys can see on the screen here is going to be his self buffs only that is to say basically his damage output uh essentially against a neutral enemy under his own power with his own self buffs not using anything external like mystic codes craft essences or again support casters or anything like that so you can see at np1 he's doing a very normal 25k there he does have the anti-evil niche that he could kind of get a little bit extra i will say the normal numbers are probably including the 20 percent from the first skill whereas the second number there is going to be if he had already noble phantasmed or the enemy just already was evil to begin with and then you also have anti-good niche and then also the ability to combine anti-good and anti-evil right there for some extra whopping firepower this shouldn't come into play unless Moriarty makes the enemy evil, or it just happens to be somebody like Arjuna Alter who manages to have both. But otherwise, it is not a common pairing, obviously. And again, you can see there is some good damage there if you can manage that. But remember, these are neutral numbers. We're just kind of looking at NP1 here. Obviously, the scalability goes up quite a bit more as you start heading down the Noble Phantasm list. So let's go ahead and talk about charge numbers before we get into the actual damage. So in this first scenario, this is going to be a 3-3x type of node. You guys can see at this point, Moriarty doesn't even need something like his append or any sort of charge from a CE. Basically, wave one here, we're just going to end up kind of using double Castoria and Oberon here as, as we will. And you can see, we're just going to go ahead and pop basically all the Castoria skills on him. Heck, we can even fire off something like Oberon's 20% on the first wave. And then we still manage to have something like Moriarty's 50% and Oberon's 50% to tie up the other two waves alongside his refund. So it's a very simple loop. And you can see you can even kind of overkill basically on the amount of charge that you're kind of incurring on the first wave. So in that scenario, looking at that type of damage, you guys can see this is going to be actual damage numbers against neutral targets. It's going to be young Moriarty with two times Castoria, Oberon, a level 100 Black Grail, and a Neo Plug Suit. Obviously, it's ideal conditions, but hey, maybe you can make something similar to this work. Just understand that your numbers probably come down from here if you don't have these conditions. So certainly taking a look at NP1 right here, you can see basically by the third wave, we're managing to spike up to something like 263k. We do obviously have Evil Niche that can come into play. At that point, you're at 284 at NP1, you're pretty much going to be looking at 395 with the good trade, which is definitely a lot better. So getting that super effective modifier is going to be huge in terms of finding a use for him. But obviously, you can see here the ability to combine it up is going to result in even more. 
And just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of the scalability of it, this would be your NP2 numbers, as you can already see quite a significant spike just with getting NP2. So definitely not something I'm going to tell you that you have to do, but it obviously would help Moriarty at this point, because again, his major sort of limiting factor probably will be his damage output. Even though it's not that bad, it's still going to be something that if you're really looking to try and scale it up, getting that second copy is going to do the most for you. Now, as we start to look at our second scenario here, this is going to be our 222 type of node or 22x type of node, where your first two waves are just two enemies. Moriarty is going to want his append in this case, and you're basically just going to go ahead and use all the Castoria skills minus one of the 20% NP gain skills from one of them. That's going to be enough for him to Noble Phantasm right there at the beginning. Then basically you're going to go ahead and use Moriarty's 50% charge skill. He's going to have refunded 30%, so that'll bring you up to about 80%. And then at that point, we end up using something like uh, Oberon's 20% charge to finish it off. And then right there towards the end, because we kind of have it. And again, you could mix and match. You could use the Castoria 20% charge in the second wave if you wanted. Utilizing Oberon's 20% just means you get more NP damage sooner. So it really depends on whatever that limiting factor is. But either way, if you know you have the refund for it right there, you're looking at 30%. So again, boom, combine that with uh, basically Oberon's missing 50% charge. And that's enough for his third and final uh, loop there. So definitely quite capable in terms of his capability of even going over something like two enemy waves. Taking a look at the damage in that scenario, it's kind of rather a moot point, but it is at least something to kind of be aware of, because remember, these are only two enemies rather than three. And you can see, actually, I suspect these numbers are actually not good. They look like uh, triple enemy numbers, but uh, it is what it is. I'll just go ahead and get rid of that one for right now. Uh, taking a look at the... Uh, at a, at a third scenario here. So this is actually going to be with Nero Bride as the third support. So instead of just trying to utilize something like uh, like Oberon, we're going to instead try to get rid of uh, him and utilize a different third support because Moriarty is someone that's capable of doing this. And I actually recommend that you guys kind of do this down the line as we start to enter into an era where JP really starts to scale the... Uh, sort of bond scaling of your frontline units. So your units like Castoria are going to end up starting to hit bond 15. Finding alternate supports that can kind of maybe work. You know, again, you get Oberon some rest or maybe you get Castoria some rest in some way. And that's going to be how you're going to be able to spread bond around more efficiently. So taking a look at this, you can see basically a three enemy wave here with double Castoria and Nero Brine. You're going to start him out with his append, basically go ahead and utilize Nero Bride's 30% charge and 45% NP gain up, and then go ahead and utilize all of one of the Castoria's skills, plus probably the arts up from the other one. And at that point, you're going to end up having 100% charge, fire off the Noble Phantasm. Moriarty would refund 61% basically off of that, so just utilizing all the other Castoria's charge skills there and you can see he's going to refund back to something like 72 percent so it's really quite capable you don't even need all of the 50 percent charge there in order for him to be able to complete the loop looking at these sorts of scenarios you do have definitely an interesting sort of dissection as we can have some uh basically interesting scenarios as uh, avalon has pointed out to me in the notes you do have things like good and evil that you can combine with in this bride scenario. But like, again, if you're going up against somebody like, say, Arjuna Alter, uh, Moriarty would have some really interesting capability there as you would also be able to combine Sky Trait coming off of Nero Bride for even more of a wombo combo as Arjuna Alter would be Sky Traded. But we're not going to build that in necessarily here. It's just an interesting thing to denote. And you can see, basically, this is two times Castoria Bride, level 100 Black Grail Neo Plug Suit. Same thing here with the added Sky Niche down there, just in case it were to come into play. And you can see it definitely is resulting in not as much damage outright as someone like Oberon, but it could certainly allow for quite a bit 
of scalability even still. So it might not be the best in terms of damage output, but it might help you just get away with somehow a little bit less of, uh, of a requirement. And again, you can see uh, obviously the scalability down here with the sky niche definitely gets a lot better. We do have your NP2 numbers here. So let me zoom in a little bit just so you guys can see it around Aurelia, my mascot there. And again, you can see there is basically the final number right down here. So taking a look now, we do have some comparisons as well that we should probably make. This is actually going to be EO. And EO is going to be one of the biggest comparisons at this point that I think a lot of people are going to make. I talked about Summer Mellison at the beginning, but the reality is you don't need Summer Mellison either. Why? Because you're going to be getting a free AoE arts looping ruler later this year. Basically right in Moriarty's niche. Eo has become pretty famous. We'll talk about her when we actually get to her event, but basically she's become pretty infamous for being a unit that has been, even though she's welfare, very usable in 90 plus plus content. And the reason for this is because she just naturally has some extra scalability built into her kit. So it's something to actually consider, especially considering some of those nodes that she was used in did have a divine enemy. So it did actually allow for quite a bit of power in EO's case. So having two times Castoria with Oberon, a level 100 Black Grail and a Neo plug suit, you are guaranteed NP5 with her. So you're looking at some solid damage. So again, this is something to maybe consider if you're going to have thoughts of rolling for Moriarty is how badly do you need him? How badly do you need the Summer Mellison down the line when you're going to be getting this welfare for free? You certainly don't have to use the welfare. You don't have to actually, you know, let that determine your roles. It's just something to consider as to, you know, maybe it might end up saving you some uh, amount of currency if you were looking at potentially rolling and you were on the fence. Definitely, though, again, you can see the Divine Niche is there. It doesn't actually impact damage a ton, but it is at least a significant portion of the damage. So it's something to also keep in mind is that fact that she does have that upward scalability. Certainly, then we also have another one coming down the line, a unit that, uh, well, basically you guys should be experiencing right now in Trom, and that's going to be Johanna. Johanna's not going to come out with the Trom banner. She's actually going to be basically next year's Valentine's Day unit, but she is also an arts looping sort of AoE ruler. Johanna's focus is a little bit more on support though, so we don't necessarily see the same sort of overlap with Moriarty as you might think. You certainly could use them side by side, but it's not necessarily something that you have to do. You can see though, basically at NP1 in these sorts of similar scenarios, you're looking at about 229K there. You do end up having anti-evil niche, basically 261, anti-man 378, and then the combination of the two. So in that regard, she does have that capability of dealing quite a bit of niche damage and actually kind of scaling to a similar level to Moriarty, perhaps even outscaling him just depending but it's up to you to determine if you wish to wait for her or again, that you will actually need her given that EO is gonna be another unit that's gonna be coming into the game or again, maybe someone like Summer Mellison or again, someone like Moriarty. So this is gonna be kind of the issue is we haven't really had any arts looping AOE rulers too much and now all of a sudden we're going to get a ton of them. So it might be to your benefit to decide which ones you want. All of them are capable, all of them can be good. It's up to you to support them properly and make sure that you make the right choices. So now, last but not least here, let's go ahead and talk about Summer Mellison in comparison. You can see Summer Mel with two times Castoria Oberon, a level 100 Black Grail and Neo Plug Suit. These are gonna be her numbers. I think the interesting thing to obviously consider for someone like Summer Mel is she does have the capability of doing even single enemy waves because she's got an 80% charge built into her kit. You can see here her damage is pretty good. It's not crazy good, but it's pretty good right out of the gate. And certainly we're dealing with the ability to have chaotic and earth niches really stacking quite a bit of damage. As again, the earth basically is super effective there. 
And then certainly as you start looking at NP2, the damage starts getting pretty much the best out of all of these that we've seen. So it's up to you, like I said, to determine if this is somebody that you want or if you wish to instead go for a different ruler. Summer Mellison is still uh, a ways away. She was basically the summer unit on Banner 2 of last year on JP. So you're looking at her not being this summer, but instead the next summer after this for an A. But again, this is something that you know is on the horizon, so you can adjust accordingly. Just for posterity's sake, let's go ahead and give you guys another comparison with Karen. As you guys can see, Karen basically at NP1 with a Black Grail does have that capability. Remember that you can also end up triggering her extra debuff passive for more damage by just literally slapping any Avenger in the party, even in the back line. So utilizing someone like Angry Mango in your back line would actually get you a little bit of extra firepower for Karen. And then we do end up uh, having anti-chaotic niche that can kind of come into play here. And then certainly at, uh, you know, again, in P2, we start getting Mellison levels of scalability. Now, this isn't the last thing that I wanted to show you because I did have one more thing, and that's going to be this really, really big comparison of essentially other ways that you could three turn with Moriarty. And the real reason why is I just want to, again, showcase that Moriarty is not a bad looper. He has quite a bit of possibilities that he can be used in. And again, a lot of this just kind of requires you guys to think outside the box. Fragment of 2004 is certainly possible. Something like the Babylonia Mystic Code or even the Summer 8 Mystic Code can all be done, again, with basically just two supports. So if you're worried about the criticism of him being that he has to have that third support, please understand a lot of the reasons that we model it with three supports is usually because that's how we get the most firepower in a three turn. But there are obviously ways to scale that firepower back and make a more simplistic comp for ease of use. And that is something that a unit like Moriarty should be well capable of doing since he actually has brute force charge in his kit. Certainly it's going to be something that other units like say Summer Mellison can do as well, but it's at least food for thought if you're concerned about his overall performance. You need not be. He will be a capable unit for you and you will be able to three turn with him. The only question will be, do you have enough damage in the face of again, sort of bloating health values that we're going to have with 90 plus plus content. So again, let me know what you guys think about Moriarty at this point in time. Will you be rolling for him or will you be you be saving for one of those future sort of uh, upcoming AOE arts uh, rulers. And again, how do you guys feel that he's going to stand up in 90 plus plus content? I will be curious to hear you guys thoughts and I will see you guys for the next one.